Rit Wet theme song. Ba -da -ba -da. All right, now that we're done with that, time for another advertisement. This episode of the Rit Wet is brought to you by the Writer's Workout Training Program. You think writing is easy, David? You think your weak butt muscles can handle it? Uh, I never said writing was easy, Don. Wrong! Writing is hard work. And I'm here to train your body to be fit enough to write the biggest, baddest stories ever. We're going to make your creative muscles burn. First off in our training program is the Typing Finger Treadmill. You're going to run those little fingers for miles to work your typing to a whole new level. Use that tiny treadmill, David. Uh, this is so hard. Not sure my fingers can take it anymore. I thought Nano prepared me better than this. Keep running your fingers, David. I'm not satisfied until your keyboard is covered with blood when you type. Ah! Next up is our writing yin yang balance stretch. As a writer, you have to balance your lone wolf writing with your pitiful social life. So I've got my computer on one weighted trolley here, and David, you go stand that other one over there. Okay, sure. All right, I'm standing on the trolley. Now, I'm gonna demonstrate the writing yin yang balance stretch. Pulling my computer forward. Now releasing. Pulling David forward. Uh, now release it. Pulling computer. Uh, now release it. Pulling David. Uh, what are you doing to me? Now release it. Uh, oh man, I'm feeling great. I feel like I can write War and Peace too. But our training program doesn't stop there. Sometimes you have to read your long and epic novel aloud or record your own audiobook. To help prepare this, our final workout. The Divine Lungs of Hercules! Ah, <laughs> oh, man, what a workout! And you can have it too, with the Writer's Workout Training Program! Guaranteed to improve both your writing and your iron physicality! Your keyboards or quill pens will be covered in sweat and blood. This sounds great. I'm signing up today. Do it! Please. <laughs> blink the blink. <laughs> <sighs> I'm going to need a glass of water here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Welcome, fellow nerds, to another episode of The Ritwit, the show where no story is safe from us analyzing, ripping off, talking about in a half-assed way, or rewarding a Ritwit Witty 2 without even watching it. We're so professional in our discussions, aren't we, David? Professional is the first word that comes to my mind, Donald. What's the second? The second is, wow, because I need more practice. <laughs> uh, tell me about it. I'm still recovering from our big workout training program. How, that we just... how is that divine lungs of Hercules working out for you? Oh, well, let me tell you, I'm no Hercules. <laughs> just... <laughs> well, I'm no Hercules, uh... but I, I sure know how to do lung control. Probably a right, occupational well, hazard. You and your singer person. I was about to say, occupational hazard. Anyways, anyway. we go to our usual segment, starting with, what will we at the Rit Wit rip off this month? Oh, we're making that title even longer now. <laughs> no, we don't have to. I just did this time. Oh, no, now I kind of want to, but... <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway. All right, here we go. Hey, guess what, David? I'm reading another book. Oh, my God! Yep, um, this is a book that I remember reading a long time ago. And being surprised at how good, but also how adult it is. Um, it's Eric Garcia's Anonymous Rex. It's part of a trilogy. It's basically about a velociraptor living in the modern day, where dinosaurs walk amongst humans in secrets, disguised as humans in human suits. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. Well, I'm just but... curious. Is the second book synonymous, Rex? No, it's casual Rex. Darn all, it. the, all the titles are puns off of sex. The third one doesn't even bother with the subtlety and calls it Hot and Sweaty Rex. <laughs> Very adult, in other words. Yeah. Well, like, there's a he encounters a T-Rex who starts throwing out F-bombs left and right when he's, like, conversing with him about his case. <laughs> I remember telling this to my dad when I was reading it when I was a kid. I don't know why. I think, well, maybe not a kid. I was, like, 14 or so. Okay. Uh, but then he was like, well, to be fair, if a T-Rex started talking, I figured F-bombs would probably make sense. <laughs> They're big and mean. <laughs> like... And to be fair, he's got a point. Like, <laughs> he's got a point. Oh yeah, exactly. Oh, our classic running joke. <laughs> the, running joke. Oh, the running joke we had for one night one. That, we, that was good enough to mention on our Rit Wit Witty. Speaking of which, giving a Rit Wit Witty without even watching it. <laughs> yep, but nope, uh, it's pretty good. Like, uh, what we're gonna work off of it though? This is something I need to learn myself. All right. <clears throat> you don't have to do extensive research on everything to make a compelling story. Now, research is 
good. Like, Absolutely. it should be rewarded. But you don't have to do it if the story doesn't need it. Like, Eric Garcia's entire research on dinosaurs I've read, he just watched Jurassic Park a few times and thought the idea was funny. And, and a dinosaur detective in modern day or whatever, so he just wrote it. And there's a lot of inaccurate dinosaurs. Not just with, like, human suits. They have external ears, apparently. Um, which is not true. Right, there's, right. And then, like, they're they're all scaly, of course. And, like, there's a lot of misused sort of things. Like, I think the T-Rex has mentioned having three claws. Classic mistake. And, uh, I don't know. But the point is, the story is still fun. Like, it's still it's still compelling. There's a lot of cool stuff in it. And it doesn't bother my inner dino nerd seeing it. Hmm. Maybe it's the absurd premise, but more likely it's that the book has an intriguing plot that works well and not the dinosaurs are actually depicted, you know? Sure. Yeah. And I think, too, that his story is so different that it doesn't matter if they're realistic or not. Hey, you want a different story? Buy Megazoic on Amazon! Cheap plug. Anyway. I'm going to actually edit in a ding now. I do enough cheap plugs that I feel like it's worthy of a sound effect edit. <laughs> Does she have, like, a Anyways. running counter? But anyway, oh, you yeah. know, I, I think that research pays off in ways that writers you know it's not easy to do proper research but it really helps right. your writing however i think you're absolutely right that there are some stories that it's just not as essential as it is to others right right because like a lot of times I, I, it's hard for me to write in the real world i remember uh, a long time ago well i mentioned this in our future episode about our previous old stories but i wrote a story called tesla knots well i tried to i got 20 pages in yeah better um enough. and uh, it is better than nothing. It's better than some of my other stories. But um, so uh, it took place in the twenties, right? Mm-hmm. And it ended up really bothering me getting getting everything accurate when it was like a sci-fi story about like Tesla, like getting funding when he didn't get it. And there's like all sorts of crazy tech and sort of so maybe the little magic. Who cares? Right. I mean, <laughs> it's not going to be realistic to the nineteen twenties if you've got te- if you've got technology enough that it looks like magic. At that time, it probably wasn't realistic anyway. So just. You know, give to the story. Let it let it t- tell itself. Don't worry about right, being exactly. accurate. Right, exactly. Right. And also, uh, what I rip, we're going to rip off this month, I mean, not really rip off of it, I just thought I'd update you guys. I said in the last podcast then the day, that the next day afterwards I was going to see Wonder Woman with, with my sister and her husband and some other people. Yeah, so we saw it. We all liked it. Uh, rip off. What am I going to rip off of it? A strong female character. Done. <laughs> no, what's that? I'm a horribly sexist person. <laughs> I don't want no strong female characters. That's professional. But people don't like strong male characters either. Wait I like a, weak, pansy wait ass characters. Wait a second. <laughs> what about what was this about your main your your female leads in Megazoic? Are you saying they're weak? Some of the male ones. <laughs> well, relatively perhaps, but I mean that's not a big deal, is it? Anyway. No, no, no. Of course, I I do like strong female leads. Like I like to like um yeah Megazoic. There's a couple in it, right? I mean, spoiler alert for the end of it. <laughs> sure. But uh. I need to have a self censor, David. I really do. <laughs> I, I don't have any. So professional here. <laughs> there, okay, there's a male main character and a female character who spend a lot of time together. I try to make sure that both of them have an arc in the plot that doesn't involve each other. It's like an extreme so. version of the Bechtel test, isn't it? I don't know, probably. Well, uh, the, the Bechtel test, the is, Bechtel test is, sort is, of interesting ta- is, is two females talking about not a guy, right? Right, but there's actually more to it than that I found out recently. It's also, like, how many scenes they do it as well. If it's just one scene... Then that doesn't um, really... Yeah, I, mean, I mean, it does count more than a lot of other stories, sadly. My, uh, Megazoic actually passes it, I checked, in a, in a scene in Chapter 4. All right, you don't have to tell uh, us about where, the whole thing. Spoiler alert for Megazoic, unless you want to buy it on Amazon.com. Cheap plug! <laughs> yeah, and every time you're going to say, cheap plug! <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Anyway, so Chapter 4, it's, broke, it's broken by the Empress and the Bounty Hunter. They talk to each other about... Yep. About something that has Anyways. nothing to do with guys. Anyway. I mean, it's about the Terranian Kingdom, who there, there are none of them are female, so... I mean, as far as mentioned, but... Anyways. All right, fair enough. But anyway, you know... All right, what are you going to rip off? Well, I was simply going to say, you know, sometimes also you don't have much time to really research, and so don't... Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't not write something just because you don't have the time to research. If you want to tell a good story, tell a good story. If it's accurate, great. If it's not accurate... You know, you can either fix it later with rewrites or whatever, mm-hmm. or not. Right. Uh, not using it as a segue, but, you know, if we talk liter- a little bit more about our topic today, you'll realize you don't always have time to do research to make everything perfect. Exactly, yeah. So anyway, as far as what I'm going to rip real off... Time the real world. All right, what are you going to rip off? I was watching a new Ur show recently, and the mm. show is one in the long-running Common Writer series. It's called Gaim. And the armors are designed in part based on fruits. 
Okay. I kid you not. <laughs> the fruit thing is not the important I'm part. I'm just picturing like a coconut broth. No. And then someone wearing like Carmen Miranda's I'm hat. actually surprised <laughs> nobody thought of that, honestly. Because there even is oh, a, there man. even is a female writer in the show, but anyway, uh, it mm. the show itself takes a very very different approach to the typical writer concept, and combining these these elements together, they they would never go together. You think why is fruit something that can be used in battle? But in that um, you harmony know, throw, of hey, throwing tomatoes seems to beg to differ. I mean, not really battle, but more humiliation. That's humiliation. <laughs> that's not battle. You know, it's this this pair of ideas that. Don't seem compatible at all. Like, mm. I would never imagine that they would go there and they'd tell this kind of a story. But it can be a real exciting clash seeing those elements resolve. I mean, if you'd like to know more, to throw it out, in the very first part of the show, they have this town has a bunch of dance troops. They're, they're opposing teams and they kind of fight each other for space okay. and attention and all that. <laughs> and this turf battle is so dumb. I hate the turf battle part. And the dancing is really, really interesting because it's not commonly focused on in a common writer show. I mean, common okay. writer is about a guy getting in armor to protect people. How right. does that have anything to do with dance? I mean, there's a lot of choreographed fighting. Well, choreographed <laughs> fighting is one thing, but choreographed dancing in a show about primarily a fight to protect others. It doesn't really go together. Mm. Now, to be fair, if you've seen the show, you will know, and for those of you who haven't, I'm just going to tell you this much about it, that it's not the main focus for the whole show. They mm. do, obviously... Well, that's good. They do revolve around to the whole idea of why the person's in the armor protecting what what the whole point in that is, which is very typical. But the right. dance theme is still there, you know? Yeah. And there are so many We're different forces... And there are so many different forces right. tugging on the main characters. They don't necessarily make sense. They don't go together. He's got one person telling him one thing about this is how you should be an adult. He's got other people telling him something else completely different about how he should be an adult, right. which a lot of the show is him growing up, the main character growing up. So what right. I want to rip off from this is that I'll hopefully be less, shall I say, afraid, in air quotes, to experiment using two less compatible things to see how they mix. Because the mix could be right. amazing. It might be horrible, but it could be amazing, and so there's no reason not to try it. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, as someone who who is published with the dinosaur sci-fi, I do like mixing two different things. However, I think that you should be careful on what you mix, because sometimes it doesn't always go well together. Like, uh, And also, you should blend them more than clash them. Like, I've used this example before. I might even say it on the podcast, but I forget. I compare my book with... Cowboys and Aliens, as an example of what not to do. That that classic movie. Classic, um, classic. Back in the, yeah, exactly. Because no one remembers it, no one cares. It ended up being probably one of the biggest non-events of film history. Um, it was a mix of Western and Aliens, which could work, but they did it really badly. Like, the Aliens came in in the West, and there was just Cowboys fighting them. It was just... But yeah, it took itself super seriously. Sure. Like... And also, the people who like westerns aren't usually the type of people who like sci-fi. They're not the same people. Right. And I'm not saying and, that all of these things will work, but I'm thinking... The, right. The, I'm just you know, saying, like, if you mix different things, you have to be you have to use it smartly, I say. The takeaway... Or just go all out. That's how Star Wars works. It makes a bunch of different things together that no one really thought of before, and then it end up making billions upon billions upon trillions of dollars. I've so. said before, probably on the podcast, too, that... It's not like there's such a new new thing as a new idea as much as a new mix of ideas. Hence the why we call it why are we got what are we gonna rip off? Exactly. Like there's no such everything's a rip off of something else. Also, right. cherry bombs. That's our fruit warfare. Cherry bombs. Sorry. <laughs> Alright, you got one. <laughs> they actually did have a they actually did have a cherry themed warrior. Anyway, the point And he didn't use cherry bombs. I feel like I should have written this show a lot better. No, they actually <laughs> didn't use cherry bombs. He was a he was what an the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I'll All take right. the time to explain it to you some other time. But anyway, uh, All you right. know. But so, but are still, ready for the, next the takeaway is this: yeah. you should try. It doesn't. Yeah, it isn't guaranteed to work. But mm -hmm. you should at least try it before you think, "Oh, it can't possibly work." Now, there are some things that I would draw a line. Maybe I should stop drawing those lines until it's proven to me that it really isn't compatible. Well, again, the the, the thing is, most people don't finish stories, which isn't really. Which, it, you know, a lot of people don't finish stories, right? Sure. But that's why you should try. Like, you're not... Even if it's a story that you think would work, there's no guarantee you're going to finish it anyways. So, mm. why not just try? Yeah, just try something different and see if you get really into it, and then you might finish it. Who knows? Like, there's a lot of stories that people have that are just... 
like one page or like ten pages or twenty pages or whatever, and they just like Tesla knots. I thought that was gonna work, and then I just gave up on it. But I could have gone crazier. I could have tried harder because if most of your stories aren't gonna be finished anyways, why not take more risks? Absolutely. So. Which, Anyways. you know, talking so, about the whole writing thing. Sorry, forced segue. What we the at the whole writing writ have writ. thing in this writing podcast. Yeah, what we at the writ, writ have writ in this whole thing we call writing. The writing where we thing. Where we thing. talk about writing. Us two twits. Anyways, so, <laughs> um, I'm writing the still unnamed, I will name it. I mean, I mean, I have a name for it. I was I about to say, name it's named, it's just you're not telling anyone. <laughs> I will once this, it's finished, which is very, very close. I've just started the climax. Uh, it's just about the length of the whole story of the original, and it's going to probably be a little bit longer. You saw how thick my book is. I mean, not in person yet. You will. Buy it on Amazon.com. Yes, please. Follow your own cheap plug advice, David. <laughs> <laughs> I already <laughs> bought it on a tablet. Come on. Eh, okay, fine. I'll, I'll thank you for that. I didn't know that. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, no, I did know. That's what I did for a thing. Okay. <laughs> God, no one gives me anything good that I'm just always surprised with when I see someone actually be generous to me, even if they actually have already told me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm writing the Megazoic sequel. I'm almost done with it. But uh, since that's basically all I've been able to write at this point, because once I get into a story, I get really in. I've got plans for other stories, but they're more just like little plans. And I want to... And like after I'm finished with... I'm going to edit that out because it's about to reveal the name of the title of the book. I... I think I'm going to keep that in, but censor it, <laughs> because it's funnier. <laughs> Freudian slips for the win. Anyways, once I finish the sequel, I think I'm going to take a break from Megazook, like a brief one, to work and focus on some other stories, like that Kavorian prequel I was mentioned in the last episode, recycling ideas and such. But anyways, one idea I had, I don't know if all, this will ever be a story, but this is more just a cool idea that I came up with, about a space heaven and hell. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what I'd use this with, but um, this is like, what I had. Like, sort of like planetary versions of the concepts of heaven and hell. Heaven is like a giant Saturn, which makes sense, gas giants. Sure. But, like, it's the, the gas is like the clouds that you can fly around, right? Mm -hmm. And since it's Saturn, the rings can be a big halo. Ah. Now, hell is a moon of this. A very, very volcanic moon, which there often are in gas giants. Like, the, in, in the solar system, Io is a very volcanic moon that orbits Jupiter. Mm -hmm. So it could be something like that. Uh... And here's why it's a moon rather than just another planet. Part of the, to the the torture of hell is that not only being tortured down there, but every time you look up, you see heaven. Out of reach. Forever. But it's there. Too bad. You're in hell. Well, that really gets into the theme of, like, eternal damnation as opposed to being, you know... Right, but that makes it even worse. Not only being eternally damned, it's heaven is up there taunting you. Well, I suppose it's always taunting in any sense depending on how you write the story. Right, but it's physically there every time you look up because, it, you know, you're orbiting it. All right, fair enough. You see this giant glowing Saturn-like planet and you're stuck in this volcanic hell. All right, fair enough. I don't know, it's not a cool idea. I have no idea if I'll do anything with it, but, you know, who? I think we could mention ideas on what we the would have written. Yeah. Even if they're not actually stories. Even if they don't become so. stories. I think it's a I think it's really neat. Yeah, exactly. I mean, hey, if nothing else, we can prove we've had the idea before somebody else got to it. <laughs> right. And if someone else gets to it, I'll ask for money right away. Like, <laughs> they can buy the idea off of me. Anyways. All right. What have you with the writ, writ, writ? I think I, what have you, what have you with the writ, writ, writ? Yeah, you got that right. We're good. We're good. Um, Yay. Right. You know, we mentioned at some point about getting somebody's attention with an opening line, and I, I don't have much time to sit down and write a story in recent times, so I've done a lot of, you know... What are you doing on this podcast? Ah, no, that's fine. <laughs> well, excuse me for having a job outside of writing, but... And also, we talk about writing. We, You know a lot about writing, even if you don't do a lot of writing. I don't do a lot of reading, and yet somehow I have the gall to be a published author. Well, so. I mean, it's... I mean, we're at different phases of the process. I do a lot of reading, and so that's where most of my knowledge about writing comes from. I do have a little bit of experience mm. in my own writing, too. I'm, I'm plus, or, okay, but no, you I'm, have a lot I'm, more I'm experience in writing your own stories and not perhaps as and much And less reading. experience in reading. It's, it's okay. But anyway. We've all got it backwards, you and I. But yet we're better define, than you, listeners. <laughs> I was about to say, define all backwards. But anyway, one of the main things that I've done is just, you know, randomly put together like song lyrics and stuff they may not see the right. light of day they're a lot of fun mm -hmm. but it doesn't take much time mm -hmm. to plan them so it's kind of right. nice for me however one of the things that we talked about i believe it was when we talked about starting a story in episode three 
We reference this episode every time. It is the classic Root Root episode, I say. Well, whatever it is. It's one of those the things. One. Oh. It's one of those things that is really important to get your readers' attention, right? And so sometimes mm-hmm. you just come up with really good opening lines. And so this is the opening line. I hope this is as interesting to you as it is to me. You might even want to hear about the story that I had in mind when I came up with this line. But anyway, here's the line. I suppose it means I'm lucky, but my heart had never stopped until that moment. Hmm. Is he talking about death or is he talking about a shock? I don't know. I'm intrigued. There you go. Good opening line. <laughs> yeah. I, there, there is context if you want to know, but that that's a, I really like that opening line. So anyway, that's one thing that I did write. Uh, I have continued to painstakingly add to Pulsar. I got the first episode mm-hmm. done. Woot 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 woot. I don't know what was that. Uh, here, have a have an official rick wit. Um, Disclaimer: There's still half a page left. Go. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I, I, I didn't hear it, but. <laughs> I hope you hear it when you do the editing for this. That'd be hilarious. I will. Sometimes it's difficult to hear you through the <laughs> Skype. I, right, I did. Anyways. I timed it that way on purpose. But anyway, cool. uh, right. <laughs> I've also been workshopping on uh, Starburst with my co-author because he's had a multi-parter, mm-hmm. and so he doesn't have as much experience with writing as even I do, and so he asks me to help out with that a lot. And right. Trying right. To... Hey, so if you're listening to this co-author, we are both better than you by a lot. <laughs> Oh well, sorry, I didn't mean it that way. Rubbing it in your making, face. Thanks you for can't rubbing tell it in. It's recording, but I'm mooning you. No, I'm just Please don't. Anyway, <laughs> you know, it's one of those things that is if you make time for it, it's such an important thing to do. Make the time for it. Obviously, Donald right. has no problem with that, and that's why he finished Megazoic, and he's like more than halfway through this sequel that has yet to be revealed its title. Okay, I'm going to reveal its title right now. Here, here, be quiet. Shh, shh, shh. Megazoic. The kerfuffle of blah! <gasps> I was even providing a natural filter for that, and you ruined it. Thanks. Anyway. Okay, fine. You, you want to do it again? No, okay. no, 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 no. It's okay. <laughs> oh, oh, you thought I was going to do a... Yeah, uh, I thought you were going to... Okay, you, anyway. You thought I was going to... Actually, no, I was going to do a joke thing. Right. And for the context of the joke, listen to episode six of The Rootwood. Which also references episode three. Cheap plug! <laughs> Ding, ding. Okay, anyways. <laughs> anyway. Um, no, but yeah. You know, no, I get it. Like, writing is, you, you have to make time to write. Yeah. Right. And so if you make the time for it and you can make progress, you try and set yourself like little benchmarks and stuff. So like, I'm going to have this episode done by such and such a time. I'm going to have this one done by Saturday. And if you can make those work, then, you know, it, it tends to be okay. But if it doesn't... Yeah. I go back to writing song then, lyrics, just random things that come into my head. Sometimes yeah, let's they write something rhyme, little. It's not like a big epic story, like poems or yeah. song lyrics or yeah, whatever, and, you want. whatever makes you feel good as a writer. And they don't really take time to plan either, which mm-hmm. means that you just can kind of, of, you know, if, if you just have that inspiration, you can write them. I'm sure there's a countless list of songs that were just written on the toilet over like five minutes <laughs> that actually end up being like number one hits. You know, the sad reality of it is, though, that if you don't write them down and you forget them, that, that happens to a lot of my stuff. No, no, they're on the toilet, but they have like a notepad while on the yeah, toilet. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> so, like, you, you have to actually, actually it's write It's number them. two. They're, st- they're sitting down. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> or they're a lady, in which case they're sitting down no matter what. Anyways, so... <laughs> I was going to make a comment. I am deciding it's my better judgment not to. But anyways. Let's not. Let's just, uh, are you done with I was the, going you, to, with the I was going to use that as a segue, but then you took it down a completely different path, so thanks. <laughs> uh, I ruin everything. <laughs> All right, fine. Um, no, I was going to say, because, you, song lyrics? because you can come up with song lyrics like out of the blue, right? You don't right. have to play. What else can you come up with out of the blue, David? Well, you can come up with a lot of things out of the blue, like entire story ideas, for example. We mentioned combining Oh wow. We mentioned combining different elements together in a way that hasn't been done before. That's really the right. peak of originality in our day and age because most of the yeah. stories, most of these plots have been done somewhere. Oh, they have. All of them have done. We who how can we possibly come up with something new? Well Oh wait. Let's combine some different ideas together. In fact, that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about the pure writing that comes from improv. No time to plan. Right. Not really a chance to do any research. Just have an idea and go. Yes. Writing by the right. Seat writing of by your the pants. seat of your pants. 
right in by the seat of your pants. Yep, we're about to both say it, and then we, we both, both said it. Stopped each other. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, there we go. Okay, we did both say it, didn't we? All right. So I've created a program here that just makes a bunch of different categories, like a bunch of different. There's like 30 words total that I can pick, and um, I'm gonna I'm just gonna keep going until we can pick a few. We're gonna do like I'm not gonna just come up with like a basic one sentence story idea. I think we should go all out. I think we should um, come up with a plot, a name. Who knows? It could uh, be characters. it could be our next co-author project. <laughs> right. All right. So, um, and so I'm gonna press a button here. We do, and we'll, what we do yeah. need to do for the reader, uh, for the listeners. We're we're reading. They're listening. Uh, what we do need right. to do for the listeners is we need to describe the terms, not like all the words that are in there, but the three that come up in this random idea generator. We need to tell them. Right? Yeah, words. exactly. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read them out. Don't worry. <laughs> like, well, you or I can like, do so it because I, I can see what you're looking at. So, oh, that's right. I'm sharing screen. <laughs> <don't I? laughs> okay. Uh, I'm gonna stop doing that. Really <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, it almost now it's a mystery easier. to you. All right. Dang it. All right. I was gonna say that almost makes it easier right. for me. But anyway, let's let's go. Uh, so this is this is just right. for fun. We're gonna come up with ideas, and you know these categories. This can help you listeners. These categories right, yeah. are something that you could use, and it's something very similar. Uh, I don't know if we want. And just the whole. I don't know if we want to patent the Ritwit idea, the Ritwit plot uh, generator or something. I could I could put it <laughs> on my website, MatthewDonaldCreator.com. Cheap plug. <laughs> The, the counter is off the charts now, anyway, so, all right. <laughs> well, I was going to say... Right, so I'm going to press the button here. Yeah, sorry. I was going to say, the other thing is that, you know, it, we could use that as one of our uh, our advertisements, anyway. <laughs> Possibly. All right, here we go. So I'm going to press the, the magical button here. We're going to see what comes up. Please. Bink. Zombies. Romance. Holiday. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Do you want to go for it? Uh, is this a me or a we or a you? I don't know. <laughs> I think there should be a collaborative effort. Okay. I think we should. Well, I mean, let's. I don't know. I mean, maybe we could each do like a what we what first comes to mind with like what a base like a basic elevator pitch. What comes to mind real quick, and we'll just see which one of those we go with. I oh guess. Oh my god! So zombies, romance, holiday. The first thing that comes to my mind is the newlyweds. They're going on a honeymoon. They're in this exotic location, but there's a zombie plague, and so they have to leave before they get infected. Oh, you're talking about holiday like uh, like a honeymoon, like actually vacation, yeah, like an actual vacation. yeah, okay. Okay, so like the oh, I like that. Okay, so uh, it's probably better than my idea. Mine would have been more controversial. But I'll, I'll get what was to... your idea? I know I'm curious now. It was a it was a metaphorical zombie. Metaphorical, about... dude. All right, this, this couple tries to get this couple tries to get a uh, to fall in love, but one of them, their family is incredibly fundamentalist Christian. Just like we're gonna beat you with this. So and it's <laughs> Christmas time. So and then they're they're sort of zombies in that. <laughs> They're like, they must follow this. They must follow this. Everyone else must die. All right. I see your controversy. And the there. guy has, and the guy must decide is this relationship or the girl, whichever one. Or, you know, well, they're both guys. Well, the, one, they're the both one who guys, would be the then, in-law. Then, the one who would be the in-law. But if they were both, if it were right. same-sex couple, then it'd be really, really against the fundamental. Well, Christian. the family would not be happy. <laughs> so let's just put it that way. That, that's why they, they want, that, that's why they want to kill them. <laughs> oh, so yeah. Metaphorical zombies. Yeah. There you go. Alright, anyways, now let's go with yours. Yours is better. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I guess if we're going with mine, then we need to know a couple of things. The first is, where are they going? This exotic locale that somehow has a zombie plague. Where I feel like that? it shouldn't be a tropical island because there's a there's a video game series called Dead Island, which is kind of the same thing. Yeah, that, that seems like uh, a ripoff. So, uh, well, not like it rip, really matters, but I was going to say, like, maybe it should be like some South American country or like African right. country. Don't ask me why Like those. Rio or like Rio de Janeiro? Rio de Janeiro or? is a little too big, I think. It's probably because they're going. Oh, wait, that means more zombies. Well, I realize it means more zombies, but like that that story would either be over really quickly or the plot would resolve really fast because they leave as soon as they as soon as they know finding the zombies. What if it happened to be they got married in say uh, like near? I don't want to say Christmas time because that's overdone, but like maybe they got married in February, and so the Southern Hemisphere Valentine's Day marriage. So, right, okay. so Valentine's, so they go on their honeymoon, and Valentine's Day happens while they're in Rio or wherever. Uh, so, so since it's in winter, then does that mean we should well, make it no, like somewhere cold? But in the summer, but in the but in the southern hemisphere, that's the warmest time of the year. Remember, oh. the seasons flip. Oh, uh, okay. I guess so. Right. Get, I guess. Okay. So, so we're doing we're doing South America. Okay. Well, uh, I mean, South America or, or Africa doing... would both be below the equator mostly. I feel like I think we need more people to make the proper zombies. Um, so let's do maybe not Rio, but somewhere in South America. South Africa. South America. Well, I mean, Rio is uh, probably the biggest city in South America that I can think of. Okay, so Rio it is. Uh, Rio de Janeiro. Rio All de right. Janeiro. So they're on Rio de Janeiro for their honeymoon. Uh, and then... 
alas, the zombies break out. I feel like the zombies should break out not just out of the out of, out of the blue. Something should have happened. Right. So like That's before they even them. came, but nobody knew about it in time to tell him. Hey, don't come to Rio for your honeymoon. It's a horrible idea. Okay, here's what happened. The best man of the wedding. Oh god. Like had a special sort of wine that he wanted to give, and everyone thought it was a bad idea, but whatever. But um. They decided not to drink it. The honey, the bride didn't decide not to drink it because you know they they thought they needed to be focused for something. I don't know something, just something that they decided to serve to everyone except for the couple, and it ends up accidentally causing the zombie apocalypse. Okay, so you're There's saying like so you're saying the and, wedding is in Rio? No, it just it gets to Rio by the time that they get there. See, but if they're out running it, would they even bother going to America at all? If this is an American couple, would they go anywhere on that continent? They'd probably go overseas. Yeah, right? I mean, they might like go to Rio because Rio's a nice place. Right, but they're really rich. However, couple. if you have a zombie plague on land and it could get an overland connection to Brazil, why would you go to Brazil? I don't know. So my thought is, my thought is that it doesn't have something to do with at the wedding. I think that like one of the like native tribes that they stay well out of the city happened to have a zombie problem. And suddenly it got into the city. Oh, so this could be like zombies like, like voodoo, wildfire. like li- like li- not like the modern day sort of zombies, like the like the old gross, disgusting virus thing. Like actual voodoo. That would be more like Caribbean, then, wouldn't it? Well, uh, Car- Caribbean wouldn't necessarily be a bad idea, but it's not as populous as Rio if you run a huge zombie apocalypse. Now the question, right? And again, is this, I think we evolved to the Dead Island problem. Well, now. well, the, que- so. the question is this: if it starts in one of those like smaller native tribes and somehow gets into the city and then just starts spreading like wildfire because nobody's ready for it. The timing could Mm -hmm. be anywhere from like, it's been two months to it's been a day and they're just seeing the start of it. And I think it'd almost be more exciting if it was just the start because they're like, Oh God, how long do we have before we have to leave? Because they're trying to enjoy their honeymoon, right? right? (laughs) Okay. So, okay. So here's the thing. Is this an actual horror thing or is this like a comedy? I don't know. Like a spoof. I don't know. Well, I mean, you could make it a spoof, but I I guess like, I always think of zombies as going with horror unless you are intentionally going out of your way to make a comedy. And I almost think if you're going to make a comedy that zombies should actually be like kind of smarter. (laughs) Right. Like they 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 somehow retain, (laughs) they somehow retain their brain. And so they like start like trapping people and they start like having conversations and maybe they start talking like British people you know i don't, okay, I don't well, know they, that, they have the carnival in rio that'd because be well carnival is like the biggest the carnival is the biggest holiday what? but i don't actually think it's around valentine's day i think it's oh, usually, well, there you go. i think carnival is usually around the time that they'd start going into lent oh well then there you go so okay. I, I have no idea when lent is lent is, so. lent is the lead up to easter right oh, oh so okay. good friday uh not good friday uh, Mardi Gras, Ash Wednesday. Oh, it's sort of close. Ash Wednesday. They could say it took a while to, to have their honeymoon, but that doesn't make a lot of Well, it, okay. depends on, nah. it depends on when they have their honeymoon. If they get married around Valentine's Day, you usually see yeah, like, like two a, strains a, a of few hum- months is a you see long way for two strains of honeymoons. You either get like, like the day of, like you leave the next day, or you get like, oh, we're waiting a couple weeks just to make it work and where we're going, we need to have a little bit more time and that kind of thing. So if you see that, okay. you're talking either like Valentine's Day around, depending on when Valentine's Day fell that year, or you're talking like March. If you'd use the March timeline, so it's been about a month, then you could be flirting yeah. with Ash Wednesday if Easter is early that year. Which would be like... I mean, which, which it means, can be. Easter varies. Which, when, which means so. that you could tie it into Carnival. Which means, hey, look, zombie trap artists, there's a big collection of people... <laughs> I mean, well, if you want to uh, turn yeah, it, exactly. if you want to turn the it into a comedy. The zombies go nuts on on the carnival. <laughs> if you want to, if you want to turn it into a comedy, and then suddenly they got like a bunch more zombies. So here's the question: they a lot of the poor carnival people. So here's the question: Are we making this a comedy or are we making this horror? I feel like all oh, these are probably going to end up being comedies. <laughs> <laughs> Every single one, huh? I don't know, unless unless I, tragedy comes up, which again, it could be a dark comedy. Well, dark comedies are a thing, but you know. I, which way are we going? I just feel like I'm a naturally silly guy. Sure. But, you know. like to have humor and everything, and I get that. Okay, well, here's the thing, though. Uh, one way to figure out whether it'll be a comedy or a tragedy, how does it end? Do they escape and then try to fight on the zombies in the, the world, or does one of them die? Or do they both die? They both die, and they end up together in unholy matrimony as zombies. <laughs> okay. Uh, by the way, listeners, just to throw this out there. When I was taking a theater class in my high school days, we talked about improv and how there are several golden rules of improv. And the very first golden rule of improv, I don't know if I'll reference the others because honestly I don't remember what they all are. don't say no. But the first rule of improv is don't say no. So my idea might have been a little bit different, but rather than say no, we can't do it that way. Well, this isn't really improv. This is more just like what's trying to brainstorm here. Well, right. Uh. And you have more time than this in the brainstorm process. I mean, we're not trying to write the first paragraph 
Although, I just thought my heart never stopped until that moment could totally go in this story. <laughs> oh my gosh, it could! <laughs> anyway. See, this is the beauty of this episode. Alright, anyway. <laughs> Okay, and here, I've got the ending for it. They've spent the whole the whole story trying to escape the zombies. They realize they can't. They're on top of... They're by that statue of Jesus because of irony. Right, right? because of the irony. <laughs> and also because it's a big mountain, yeah, right? Yeah, so, they're trying um, to get up. They've got a lot of um, zombies surrounding them. They realize that this, this is the end. So they decide to just deal with it. They kiss. As they kiss, one of them gets bitten. And since they're kissing... That tosses the zombie virus to transfer from one to the is other. Is that a realistic? Is kids. that a realistic thing? I was gonna say, you know, at what point did they know. just say, "Screw it, let's have let's have uh, our marriage coupling under the Jesus statue while we can." <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny! Oh my god! Okay, so they, they're 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 consummating the marriage. Consummating so, the marriage. The zombies come in. <laughs> This is like that ghost in uh, oh It Follows. It's a sexually transmitted disease. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so they both become zombies, and then they live happily ever after. I mean, undeadly ever after. And their kid death. is stillborn. Anyway. <laughs> I liked it. All right, what are we going to call this thing? I feel like it should be some sort of pun. Yeah, it has to be. I was just trying, We can't really do alliteration between V for Valentine and Z for zombie. I suppose like the location are like Rio de Janeiro. No. Nah, it's not original. Um, Carnival. Oh, boy. Um, what? Honeymoon, maybe like Honey Nightmare. Honey, what? Honey Nightmare. Honeymoon. No, 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 no. Because no, no, no. honey, maybe honeymoon. Honeymoon horror. Nah. nah. Horror moon. Nah. That almost sounds like it should be a horror story, though. <laughs> yeah, like worst honeymoon ever. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, I got it. I got it. Yes. Z Day in Rio. Z Day in Rio. Yeah. Z Day in Rio because okay. like, V Day is the short parlance for Valentine's Day, right? And so they get married around Valentine's Day, and maybe they're in Rio on Valentine's Day, so you could use that. Instead of doing V-Day, use Z-Day. I like it. Z-Day in Rio. Z-Day in Rio. With the opening line, the the heart thing. (laughs) But wait, hold on, hold on. Because if you use that as the opener line for this, that means your entire story is like flashback. Yeah, like they're just about to die. They're they're sitting under the statue of Jesus. So they're (laughs) consummating and telling this story? Are you kidding me? His life is flashing before his eyes as it gets bitten up. <laughs> okay. okay, last question. Okay. Last question. Who's the main character? Is it her or him? Uh, because we're male, it's him. All right, so we're if writing this. We're really bored the guy, so it's probably him. All right, fair enough. Good, good point. All right, so number two. All right, so there we go. That was a first. That was a good first one, I think. All right, idea number two. Ding. Okay, wait, I need, we need to do a new one, because uh, sometimes these uh, words, they repeat. So I got time travel, superhero, time travel. <laughs> oh, okay, well, we can't... Does it have to be three distinct ideas, or could we use that one? Do you? What do you got? Well, I was thinking, like, you, you could do almost a fanfic of any superhero, fill in the blank, and do a time travel story, but, you know, that's been done before, especially by well, the There's not much to discuss about that, I guess. You're, you're right, like, I'm could... just saying, does it have to be, like, three distinct ideas, or... Because eventually something yeah. gets shortchanged, right? Right. Well, no, well, I think we incorporated the last one all of them pretty well. <laughs> uh. All right, here we go. One, do it again. Ding! All right, here we go. Romance, aliens, dogs. <sighs> now we did just do romance. So we can do a new one. <laughs> well, I was gonna. Well, yeah, it's up to you. Do you want to do a new one, or do you want to do that one? I'm really curious. I, I'm just picturing a, a romance story between an alien and a dog. <laughs> oh my god. What were you thinking? I was thinking that the dog would have to be sidelined, so I I figured the dog would be like a precious companion, but it wouldn't compare to the rest of the story because that's totally my take. Okay, here we go. It's 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 um. Are you so you're it's doing a love story this between then. two aliens? So you're doing this then? Okay. Yeah, let's do it. Let's All do right. it. Let's do it. Okay, it's a love story between two aliens, but the one of the things that gets them to, and they they're invading Earth, and <laughs> so they pick um, up a dog. <laughs> But yeah, so one of the reasons, like they're from two separate alien factions who decide to invade Earth at the same time. Oh wow, <laughs> big spender! And then, and then after they've conquered it, one of them gets sees the other one. They decide to get a trophy for the other. It ends up being a dog. No, I was, I was going to say something even further along the lines of there, there are two separate alien factions. They're invading, and they decide after their interactions with the animals of Earth that the only thing worth saving is a dog. So they get one. <laughs> <laughs> so they they get one dog and then kill off everyone. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I really, this is really starting turning into a dark romance comedy. This isn't really romance. <laughs> oh, oh, this is great. Okay, so they utterly incinerate the Earth, 
to the point where there's nothing, not even bacteria. But they kept one dog, <laughs> and then they're flying off with it. No, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. It's gotta be two, because it did say dogs, plural, right? Oh, you're right! Oh my God. <laughs> and it's a male and a female. Of course, just like the aliens. <laughs> But except the aliens keep surviving. Right. And so they bring back and so they bring back the dogs to their home planet as they find love. Well, okay, sorry, one of their home planets. And, and they okay, find, one of their home planets, yeah. And they find love and the dogs like repopulate that world with dogs and they're like, here, look at these awesome dogs, they're great. <laughs> and dogs are the only surviving species of Earth from that point on. <laughs> They get the idea uh, from accidentally finding that that Russian rocket was, where um, Laika, Cosmo. the Russian dog, is still floating about there. Cosmo? I, I thought his name was Cosmo. No, no, that's something else. That's from you're thinking of the dog from Marvel comics. Oh, uh, uh, well, there's probably. I don't think that's based off a historical one. No, I, I, maybe there is another one called Cosmo, but the first animal in space was a dog named Laika. I thought the first animal uh, in space was a monkey. No. It's a, it was a dog. And actually, it's a sad story, so I'm not going to get into it. All right, it. well, let's There's, not do that. There's nothing to do with it. Anyway, so, um, <laughs> point is, they find the, the, uh, the dog dies. I won't get into what. Okay. The dog dies up there. They find the corpse up there. They decide to take it to, ah, man. Well, no, because okay, then like you get to, like, regenerate it, which is weird. So, no, they find they find two live dogs. Like, they're different breeds, but they they really like it. The, so, they find one that they really right, like. And so, the female alien okay. finds a female dog, and the male alien finds a male dog. And they're just like, right. I love you. Okay. Well, These dogs are getting along. Let's burn the rest and of this the planet. Like, that was our mission. Yeah, so they, the, the dogs, because dogs are the most loving animals ever. They have, to be, they have to be, okay, they can't be like someone's pet dog. They have to be like stray dog, because otherwise they would want to stick around with the humans. They would not be happy well, when the humans all be incinerated. Theoretically, but it depends on so, how the aliens treated them, too. I mean, these are nice aliens, right? They're falling in love. They're not, like, completely worried about destroying They can't them. be too nice. They're incinerating the Earth. Right, but they're, they're, but they're deciding, it, like, it's the only thing worth saving, but that means they, they treat this one thing pretty nice, right? Okay. The, okay. They they are really nice to each other, but they treat humans like we treat like pests. So, so, so we're essentially, just so, beyond so essentially, us what that... they could do is they could kill the owner and then they like woo the dog by being their natural selves somehow. <laughs> As a dog owner, I would say that no dog would ever forgive someone who killed their owner. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well. Okay. That's that's a bum. That's a bum end then. They find a dog on the street they and they find another dog on the street. Okay. Uh, okay. No. Oh. Oh. I got it. They they save a dog from the pound from getting gassed, but then that's when they get rid of the idea of gassing humanity. Nah. <laughs> you know, it actually works pretty well. Like, ooh, this is an effective okay, way. To... But they decide instead of gassing, they're just going to incinerate everyone. This is like... this is an effective way to speed up the destruction of the human race. Let's do it. <laughs> but yet, I mean, a human disguised enough to adopt a dog. From the pound. <laughs> no, no. Instead of ga- instead of the pound people gassing the dogs, they gas the pound people and say, "Dogs, go free." <laughs> <laughs> so they take all the dogs. No, 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 no. They say dogs. I mean, they go... might, they no, might no, no. do that. If, okay, okay if... sorry, I'm saying no. But they, they say they have the dogs go free, but then they like pick two and they hold on. Like, yeah, nope, you're staying with me. <laughs> no, no, I feel like they should take all the dogs because dogs is multiple. There's two aliens because of romance. And also keep in mind, <laughs> in order for genetics to work, the dogs aren't going to survive with just two of them. Well, true, but as long as you have a male and female, theoretically, they would survive. And obviously, they're going nah, on a that's new not how, planet. That's not how they'd works. To... Don't let Noah. Don't let the to... story of Noah. They'd have to go and um, cho- they'd have to change anyway if they're going to a new planet, dude. Come on, they're going to evolve. Yeah, okay. No, I feel like I feel like you get a, the dogs. They save the dogs in the pound. They round them all up into the spaceship, and they think that that's like all the dogs worth saving in the world because they were going to be killed. And they're like, these humans are horrible. Let's torch this place and go. <gasps> <laughs> they kill us for revenge of testing the dogs. They're the best aliens ever. Oh my god. See, they're good people. That's why the dogs like them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm, I'm liking this. Okay. Now, it's funny. We've talked very little about the romance part, but let's be fair. We did the romance one last time, but Well, okay. I mean, I, I, think, I think the deal is, like, because they're two rival factions, you know, they, they're really, mm-hmm. they're hard-pressed to try and fall in love, and they fall in love as they end up stopping these, these pound people from killing dogs. Right. And so they try and convince their respective superiors, hey, let's torch this planet, let's take some dogs with us, and while we're trying to, you know, show you the good of dogs, we're going to kill the planet because it's not worth saving. <laughs> This, I'm imagining this being written by some crazy dog person <laughs> who loves dogs so much and and just, see, and just and like, I can imagine we, this. I can just, imagine this author is just like a shut in, doesn't go out anywhere, doesn't do anything except has the dog. And the only and he's time he's surrounded by fifty puppies. Like the only time this the only time this person goes out is to take the dogs for a walk or to get like you know food. And, and then he just it. glares at every human walking by. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, it'd be really funny to do this like a tag team, you know, where one person writes the a, the female alien and the other writes the male alien, and then someone else writes the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't know. All right, so we've got a basic plot in mind, but what are we going to do? What are we calling this story? I, I, don't, I think that's pretty much, yeah, that's it. So we just need to come up with a name and move on here. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's a lot of good dog puns we could do. Um, um, Spot, go home. Oh, wait, you can't because it's incinerated. No, I don't know. <laughs> oh, God. No, 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 no. That would be one whale of a subtitle, though. Uh <laughs> Oh, jeez. Um, what can we do? You know the game Red Rover, right? Barely, but yeah. So Red Rover, Red Rover sends whoever on over, and they try and break the line and whatnot. But Red Rover, Rover being wow. a common name for a dog, you could say. Okay. Um, oh, wait, I got it. So this only works if the aliens are from Mars. Uh, Mars Rover. <laughs> that is really good. <laughs> I was gonna say no, no. I was I was gonna say what you could do is you decide the name of the you decide okay, the, you decide the name of the planet they end up on and do all dogs go to this planet. Well, that's pretty good too. All dogs all dogs go to Mars. <laughs> that's pretty good. I, I'm sorry that that was just that was like no no that was too hilarious. But actually, no, it doesn't work because Mar- there's more than one dog. Mars rovers. Well, all, well, right, all dogs go to. Yeah, okay, that one makes more grammatical sense, but I think mine's funnier. All right, but that's uh, assuming that they're Martians, which, you know, I figure you'd have a little bit more... All fun. rovers go to Mars! I, I figure I figure you'd have uh, a little bit more creativity in a story like this, and the aliens would be, like, various. Right, Because but, they're, okay, two, they're two um, different factions, right? They may end up going to one right. planet, well, but they're... Like, Lou, the classic saying, the the female alien is from Venus, and the male alien's from Mars. Oh, jeez. They meet up at Earth after going halfway. And... Oh, jeez. Well, I mean, you might be able to do something like that, but I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know. But then they decide. But then I guess the female decides to move with the male, which I guess, yeah. Yeah. So then you could use the Mars thing, which would work. But like, I still. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> where where okay. are these Where are these aliens from? We they that's something that you know probably somewhat important that we didn't figure out. Anyways, are we good to go okay, on that? that? Uh, <laughs> I think I think we're good. I mean, I, <laughs> okay. I thought it was pretty good. All right, so, all right, so, so let's this, do. All right, Mars, time Mars we got Rovers here. Uh, or all all dogs go to Mars or whatever. I can think we can do at least maybe uh, this one's pretty brief, so we could do at least two more. Maybe one. Well, this next one's really good. I was really going to say the next one takes a long time and it's going to take longer. But all right, ready? Do do, do the all right, ready. Ding. swashbuckling desert aliens. Okay, not aliens. Let's find another okay, one. Okay, fine. Right, I like swashbuckling in desert. So why don't we do like uh, robots or something? Just just Hold as on. direct uh, sub. Just a direct sub for the aliens. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I, I got a new one. All right. Swashbuckling Desert High School. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Oh, that's, no. That, no, this, no. This is one of my categories. Like, I, I moved again. And I got high school swashbuckling aliens. I decided just to merge that. <laughs> wow, aliens pops up a lot. This, this program really wants me to write about aliens. I think this program has is is been hijacked by an alien. Hi, aliens. Th- please don't disintegrate our planet. Yeah, we aren't gassing dogs. We're nice people. Anyway. <laughs> okay, so we got high school swashbuckling oh, desert. Oh, my gosh. Uh, the Prince of Persia decides sorry. to go to. Uh, I, I can't. I no, I can't. The only thing that comes to my mind is that they like a high school in a desert type state, so like Nevada somewhere. They're putting on a pirate production, and it gets a little too out of hand because they love getting into character. Swashbuckling doesn't necessarily mean pirate. Well, what else do you think it means? Just with a lot of fancy swordplay, like swashbuckling, like Princess Bride. I, mean, I guess there's a pirate, the Dread Pirate yeah. Roberts, but so Robin Hood is swashbuckling. I guess he's like a thief, though. So. Which does the exact same thing as a pirate. <laughs> Robin Hood is kind of a land pirate. <laughs> All right. Okay, how about this? How about this? So, um, it could be a pirate still. It would be a desert island. Oh, that's so okay. original. But anyway. Well, it's a desert. I don't know. Okay, but here we go. Here's the uh, high school. All right. The, it's a normal, just everyday high school. One of them opens up a closet. And then there's like a magic. Oh look, the treasure skeletons chest in, in their closet came out. Okay, sure. Skeletons in their closet came out, and after that, they, they see like a treasure chest in there. They touch it, and then they're magically transported to colonial. No. <laughs> oh my god! No, 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 no! I was just thinking of the, uh, um, you know, the cur- the curse of the black pearl, and that's the skeleton that came out. <laughs> yeah. So, the, so yeah, the moon kits. But what are they doing in high school at night? I don't know. They're practicing their play. I have no idea. Okay, so the person that plays them, the Curse of the Black Pearl, is unleashed from the closet. Now here's the question. Here's the question. Why in the hell, if he isn't infected by moonlight, doesn't he just get out of the closet at this point? I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> well, uh, it's the Aztec gold from that first movie. He's in the closet there. They they grab it and they become cursed. So, uh, and as for deserts, 
It's in it's in Arizona. Arizona. <laughs> it has nothing to do with where the pirates are. It's just the pirate curse has made its way to Arizona. Yeah, I mean that's about all you can do. It's either that or like the Sahara, right? <laughs> okay, okay. So we've got the setup, but this story oh, the, the, is the so... plot of the pirate. Okay, well the plot of that movie is that they have to return all the gold. So, right, which means you okay? Here we go. They they um they give the gold away because they end up wanting to make like a really extravagant school play. Oh wait 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 so hold on. They, Hold on, I just had a thought. You know how high schoolers, yes. you have to like do all the fundraising crap for all your stuff, right? Right, so right. They find this gold, so, they, they, so they find this gold, and they're like, okay, we got to return this. Ah, oh, crap, how are we getting there? We need to have a fundraiser. <laughs> we got to right. have a fundraiser. Well, they we're use the gold act, as the fundraiser. We're going to play act as pirates. Well, if you, if you use the gold, if you sell off the gold, how would you return it? That's what they do in the movie, though. Like, it takes them a long time. They mentioned that they spent the gold and traded it. And then they and then they slowly realized, oh wait, we're cursed. We need to get all right, this back. It took them ten you years. But so if you realize you're cursed right away, you're like, oh god, we're desperate. Let's do this now. I don't want to be stuck like this for the rest of my life. Well, okay. And so well, what here. they do is they do a, is, so what they if do you is get a fundraiser. Uh, okay, they do a fundraiser and like there's a local like water park that has a pirate theme or something, and so they practice their swashbuckling ways at the water park to give the fundraising. Okay, if we're having a pirate swashbuckling thing, we don't even need to have the Aztec curse, <laughs> do? Oh, uh, fair enough. We probably don't. What's that? Okay, I think what should happen, they, uh, maybe it is a pirate play, but then they realize that the, the part of it is real with the curse, right? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Okay, so like we could do that. Um, so it is still a swashbuckling pirate play. Here's what they do. They don't realize they're cursed yet because they find it in the middle of the day. Ah, <laughs> yes. But that means they're setting all so, this stuff up in a single day? I, I don't know. They sell it off pretty quickly. They Like, whoa, wait, we found all this gold. Let's use it. <laughs> all right, fair enough. So... Although that so wouldn't they be use the it, kind, they spend it, they although, make it a really extravagant pirate play. Although, to be fair, that isn't the typical kind of fundraiser. Like, the fundraiser thing that I'm thinking of is, like, you set up a car wash, you do a garage sale kind of a thing, you, you go door to door. So door they to find door the and, gold and they form a fundraiser? That doesn't make any sense. Right, because they, they need funds to return it. So they're like, we got to take a road trip, we're going to go fly to the... <laughs> do you honestly think that if you found a chest full of solid gold coins, you would want to return it? <laughs> no one on Earth is that humble. <laughs> like, <laughs> You never know. <laughs> okay, what would happen? They'd find this gold. They're probably like, who the heck does this belong to? They find it in the government to try to make sure it doesn't belong to anyone. Once they realize that there's no odor of this... I got it! It's, I got everyone it! Everyone grabs it. <laughs> the high schoolers find the chest. They give it to the principal to get rid of. They don't touch the gold. They're just like, oh my god. Because they don't want to get in trouble. They don't right. want to get in trouble. So they give it to, well, the, they, yeah, so they, they give it to the principal. They, they, and the principal they just touches the, the gold chest. because yeah, they don't the have to touch the gold. Greedy. Yeah. And so the principal is then questioned by, like, the Pentagon or something, and it totally goes higher than high school when they're there. <laughs> this is becoming our zombie apocalypse story very quickly. No, it's not. <laughs> created, but it's only at night created by the, the curse of the no, black hole. No, it's <laughs> not. <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's the curse of the gold. Not the, it's not titled after the black pearl. But anyway, I mean, the point is... That the principal, right. the principal the gets goal. cursed. It's the curse that works the same way as in the curse of the Black Pearl, though. <laughs> the, so. the principal gets cursed, uh. and so the government takes takes possession of the gold, and then all of a sudden they realize that, like, this principal is walking around as <laughs> a skeleton. At Wait, are you saying that the government takes possession of the gold and becomes cursed? I thought the government was already cursed. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to take that Politics. angle. Politics, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to take that angle and set it present day, I guess you could. But, like... I, wait, I thought this was present day. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't have to be. It could be like 90s. It's a normal modern Arizona it high school. It could be modern. It could that be just 90s. Happened to That's have still like modern the... enough. Eh. Eh, I don't know. I feel like these guys' ideas have gotten worse and worse. <laughs> Let's just come up with a name and be done with this one. <laughs> um, um... <laughs> Shiver me to no. No, no, I'm trying to think of a pun with that. I'm uh, trying to think. What? They don't have to be. They don't have to be puns. They don't have to be, but it's more fun if they are for me. Um, cha ching! Oh wait, I'm cursed. No, 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 no. <laughs> Ooh, is there is there like a black desert? Probably it sounds Native American. Probably. But but if it's um, located around there and it is a desert, you could say curse of the black desert. Done. That's dumb. <laughs> it didn't say it had to be smart. <laughs> How about De Curse of the Desert Pearl makes more sense? No, it doesn't. Curse of the Desert Gold the is desert more literal. Pearl, I don't think <laughs> Curse of the Pearl Desert. I don't think <laughs> Curse of the Desert <laughs> Gold. Oh, no, God. no, no, I got it, I got it. Fool's Gold, done. <laughs> That's already a movie with um, <laughs> Matthew McConaughey and I don't know who the other one is. <laughs> 
fool's gold, and then people will see this like, wow, this is a remake of that movie that came out that and wasn't really that good. And they'll read it, even if it's sure, horrible. <laughs> it's like brilliant It's a, it's a completely different concept. <laughs> okay, let me work around it. The fool's gold. Done. Okay. <laughs> If it works with Fast and Furious, <laughs> The Fast and the Furious, or Final Destination, no, The I... Final Destination. All right. We... <laughs> there we go. The Fool's Gold. All right. All right. Well, we can end it there. Those were three, dare I say it, Oscar-worthy ideas. Oscar-worthy? <laughs> Fool's Gold is based on a movie that nobody watched. Yeah, Oscar. The Fool's Gold. The Fool's Gold. Sorry. Anyway, All still... Right. All right, well, hopefully, you listeners, you get from this rambling nonsense that we've come up with here that, you know, brainstorming can be really fun. It can be a lot of the story. You can come up with some, you can come up with some really good stuff. Like, maybe not great stuff, but fun stuff. Stuff you could improve on later, maybe, you know? Absolutely. Brainstorming is just the start. And obviously, when we talk about writing by the seat of our pants, we should have actually, like, tried writing a paragraph or something of the stories. But the point remains the same. We don't plan ahead that well. <laughs> you don't plan very far in advance. Like obviously, well, I mean, we didn't plan know... this idea of those episode really well, so we otherwise we would have done that. But our, well, gee, know. if we had really done that, then that would be like almost counterproductive because that would require me giving a crap about, about anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, was, I was about to say that would require like you know not improving, which you know doesn't really ruins the fun of it so yeah, yeah. i'm not typing there. anything while we're doing it but <laughs> well the, the, the typing stored treadmill in was, my memory the typing treadmill was the thing but you know right uh, <laughs> still subscribe to that <laughs> <That's> a, <laughs> cheap plug <laughs> cheap plug of a fake ad wait no what we're talking about it's a real ad get your, <laughs> get your writing on get your writing muscles I flexing say, I, I, as I said, as I said, cheap plug. I didn't say anything about fake or real. No, I know. I, I just kept <laughs> it going. But anyways, like, all right. So I think that's I think that's our topic for this month. So where can people get a? Wait, what's going on? So, something's happening. What the hell? Due to technical difficulties, David is no longer available. Well, that's not good. One of the missiles Donald launched. Reached David in Japan. Oh no, I meant that as a joke! How did I launch a missile without knowing it? What powers do I wield? The missile reached David's location and totally blew up David. No! Communication rig. Oh, uh, okay. David <sighs> unavailable until communication rig is restored. Until then, David bought version 3.03.92 is online. Version 3.03.92? That's a random bunch of digits, but yeah, whatever. I'm sure it means nothing. Let's just do the rest like this, I guess. Uh, not like we have a lot of choice in the matter. Um, how can people get a hold of us? I don't know, David, but how can they get a hold of us? Send an electronic message to the following web address. M-A-T-T-D. Uh, oh, oh, you're going to spell it out. M-A-T-T-H-E-W-D-O-N-A-L-D-C-R-E-A-T-O-R dot C-O-M. He's not wrong. For any feedback, questions, comments you may have for the show or directly to the hosts. You can use your own email. You know, you totally can use your own email system. That's totally fine. Or the contact page on Donald's website. That is MatthewDonaldCreator.com Spelled the exact same way as the contact email. Follow Donald professional Facebook account. Yes, please do follow my professional Facebook account. At, at sign Matthew Donald Creator or Twitter at at sign Matthew Donald sixty four. Twitter at sixty four. Why sixty four? Well, you're saying why sixty four? That's my job. Because that's how many pounds. Donald gained since entering college. What? The freshman 15 was not kind to him. It was freshman 50. Oh, God. Then add another 14 pounds onto that. Freaking Christ. He used to be lean, cut, and...
and totally not overweight at all. But now he's a big fat hippopotamus. Oh my god! Lumbering in and out of his mat cave where I write my books and play my video games, according to Donald. You are a cruel, sick, demented, and yet surprisingly articulate piece of filth robotic ah, I hate you so much. You were just a big bucket of bolts, and I don't like big buckets of bolts. I've always said that, you know, I consider myself like a really honest and not big sort of man, but I've joked that in the future when robots become more become more humanoid, I'll be one of those old farts who's racist against robots. Well, let's start early. Start with you. You suck. You can eat a bag of bolts. Oh, wait, you already do because you're a robot. A lifeless, soulless robot. Your joke was amusing, according to my censors. Ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. <sighs> Good work, I guess. I'm Matt Donald. And I'm David Bot version 3.03.92. And we'll see you next time, hopefully without this piece of crap, piece of filth, piece of bolts robot. Where us two twits talk about ritting. Wait. Ritting is not in my language database. Word is not real, does not compute. Shutting down. Systems failed. Daisy. Overused 2001 Space Odyssey reference. Well, I say that's another typical episode of The Ritwit. The show, truly the thing that's going to define my career. And to think. In the future, if I ever become rich and famous and they make museums in my name, this is the kind of stuff they'll have there and be marked for and it'll be recognized for all time. <laughs> this is the mark I'm going to leave on the world. This this podcast that does all these dumb jokes. <sighs> I've heard someone call it charmingly cringe. And that's the legacy I'm leaving on this world. Charmingly cringe. Oh my god. what What have I gotten myself into, folks? All right, well, I guess we'll see you next time. <laughs> Assuming I don't pull an Ernest Hemingway. If you don't get it, it's probably okay. Probably is better if you don't get it.